Welcome back, Pokemon trainers. Professor Taz here, the lab coach on back quarter, and it's time for another news update video for the week. Now, first thing to mention, as usual, I do have a booster pack I'm going to be opening. Roaring Skies for this week. I'm going to open it up at the end of the video, and the TCG online code card is going to go to one lucky viewer who participates in the question of the day this week, which I will give you as I open this at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that towards the end. But first and foremost, there's some more, some other news mentions I have to make from the world of Pokemon. Now, first of all, in Pokemon Shuffle, until next uh, Tuesday, March 29th, there are two special stages available. There's actually some ending tomorrow, but I'll mention the ones that are going to be lasting a little bit longer. And first one is going to be Noivern in a timed battle. Now, these timed battles are pretty intense. You've got to be flying those Pokemon around left and right to get your links together. It is a flying type in the game, so choose something good against flying types like ice, rock, or electric, and try to get as much damage off on Noivern as you can in the time limit, and you might have a chance to catch this and add it to your collection. Another special stage is still available until next Tuesday as well. It is another Pokemon Safari, and the way this is set up is you don't know exactly what you're going to be fighting as you go into this. You're limited to three Pokemon. There's no optimized feature, so you actually have to choose Pokemon from your collection that are going to be good against the majority of what you're going to find. However, in this Pokemon Safari, pretty much I think every single Pokemon will be weak to rock. So bring three of your best rock-type Pokemon and get as much damage off as you can. The Pokemon in the Safari for this installment is Houndour, Houndoom, Noibat, Pineco, Fortress, Hoot Hoot, and Noctowl. So as I say, I'm pretty sure they're all classified as the proper types to be weak to rock. So if you bring a full team of three rock-type Pokemon, you have a good chance to get some of those Pokemon defeated and added into your collection in Pokemon Shuffle. Now, in video game news, they've released the results for the Kanto Classic online competition that I participated in, and I'm actually pretty happy with how things turned out. Now, as I said going into the Kanto Classic, I didn't put a full, kind of proper amount of strategy into it. I kind of just used Pokemon that I wanted to use, mostly for nostalgia's sake. Uh, most notably Charizard, Venusaur, and Blastoise. I know there's better Pokemon out there, but I thought, I just want to use these guys. And I brought Zapdos, Arbok, and Machamp as a good kind of backup for the rest of that team. And given that, I actually did really good compared to what I could have actually done. So, the total amount of players in the Kanto Classic was 32,220. And my personal rank, I ranked at the spot of 10,108. So that's actually a little bit above the top third in that uh, competition. So for a team that didn't have full synergy and proper kind of strategy put together, I didn't do too bad. I got uh, 1,527 points as my end result. And as I mentioned back then, I did get 13 wins and 13 losses, so I broke even. I did unfortunately miss out on four particular battles because I didn't know that the competition didn't end right at midnight on that Sunday. It ended around, I think, 7 o'clock my time or 8 o'clock. And I figured, like, I didn't know that. I was thinking, I can get those last four battles in at the end. I was hoping to push myself to a positive rating as opposed to just breaking even. But unfortunately, I did miss out. But I could have actually placed a little bit higher, perhaps. But of course, I could have also lost those four matches and dropped way back down. So anyway, I'm quite happy with placing in the top third for a not fully EV bred, or sorry, IV bred, and, well, they were EV trained, but anyway, not a pure battle bred team of Pokemon. They actually did pretty well, and I'm quite proud of my guys for doing so. Now, I'm going to put a link in the description if you want to check out more full details about the Kanto Classic, the rankings of players, and the most used Pokemon. Click that link. It's going to go to the Pokemon Global Link website, get all the information. I really love the way they do this Global Link. You get to see the most used Pokemon, for example. Dragonite was the most used in the Kanto Classic. I wonder if that was because Dragonite, or Lance of Dragonite, was the prize for participating. Either way, Dragonite was a pretty powerful foe to deal with, and Clefable and Gengar were also top ranked in the most used Pokemon. And if you click on the Pokemon, you actually get to see what moves they were using, and the abilities they had, and the natures, and normally you can check the held items, but of course there were no held items in the Kanto Classic. But you can get all that information. It's really good to help you try to decide what kind of a team do you want to build for like the next competition that comes out. See what the top most used Pokemon are using and recreate that or try to come, you know, combat against it, plan to deal with that if you happen to face it. So I will say Dragonite was a pretty tough competitor. I encountered a, quite a number of them and as soon as they set up a Dragon Dance, they almost always, I shouldn't say almost always, but they had a pretty good shot of winning from that point on. I did manage to use some cool uh, Avalanche for my Blastoise that if they outsped my Blastoise's defense was pretty good. He could take a hit and then double damage the Avalanche back at that uh, Dragonite. So on occasion it worked. Other times I used my Machamp's Ice Punch. Well, first of all, one of these really cool battles I had, I used Machamp's Low Sweep. Not very effective, but we did slow that Dragonite down. And 
I don't know if it gets the ability that Lugia has. I know there's an ability that says if the Pokemon has full HP, its defenses are either doubled or 50% more, but anyway, they have a boosted defenses, and by using Low Sweep to slow it down, if it did have that ability, it no longer had it, and therefore Ice Punch was hitting for regular power, and I think Machamp always got the knockout in a situation like that with Ice Punch, so I was quite happy with that. And Clefable being the second most used Pokemon, now, I mentioned back in the in the, uh, the last episode of the Kanto Classic, a person I speak with on Twitter, Sarin or Sarin, again, not, her, not sure how to pronounce that, but they were saying that Clefable could possibly be everywhere in this competition. I hadn't considered that, but when they mentioned that, I thought, I want to actually prepare for that, so that's why I brought Arbok. So I'm quite happy to see that Clefable was the second most used Pokemon, and that every single time we came up against one, my Arbok was the perfect counter to that. Haze away all those minimizes, get a poison jab off, if not getting the knockout, then ensuring that Clefable is not going to survive another hit from whoever else I send in afterwards. Gengar was a tough one as well. We didn't encounter too many of those ourselves, which is interesting because it is the third most used, but I think the only real time we had a good showing against a Gengar was when my Charizard and a Gengar came out. So my Charizard was going for a Thunder Punch against a Gyarados. They swapped the Gyarados out for the Gengar. I hit with the Thunder Punch, and then since it was faster, it actually outsped the Sludge Bomb on my Charizard, which did over half damage, and then Charizard Shadow Claw managed to take it down. So that's the only time I can remember fighting a Gengar personally. But it is really cool. You can check out all the stats of these Pokemon, how much they were used. You can actually also go in and look at whichever Pokemon you want to find by name or Pokedex number and see how often it was used and what moves and stuff it had. It was pretty cool. So in that, or on that note I should say, since I did participate in the Kanto Classic, we have finally been given the Lance's Dragonite. Now, you probably can't see this, but I'm going to show you some screenshots here. Lance's Dragonite is at level 62, and it comes with the moves of Agility, Slam, Barrier, and Hyper Beam. And you'll see it is, the original trainer is Lance. This one in particular has a nature that boosts special attack and lowers defense. And it's got a pretty awesome attack stat at 174. Now it's interesting, this is the exact move set that it had back in the Red and Blue games, back when Hyper Beam was a physical type move, when all normal moves were on the physical side. So Hyper Beam makes a lot more sense with the original setup of a Dragonite. And this is definitely a move set that's going to need some tweaking, but Barrier is that move that it can no longer get back. So if you're going to get this Dragonite, if you participate in the Kanto Classic, keep that Barrier attack because it's going to make this a very unique Dragonite, and boosting defenses isn't actually that bad of an idea, especially since mine in particular has a defense-lowering nature. And you'll see it is mild nature, that's what the, uh, the nature is, the, what was it, special attack boost and defense drop, okay. So that's what Mild does. I'm not particularly familiar with every single nature that Pokemon can have and what they do at the drop of a hat. Certain ones I do remember, like Adamant, lower special attack, raises attack. Jolly, lower special attack, raises speed. So I know a few things. And it is, it says, met at the Pokemon League, which is actually pretty cool, because that is where you would first encounter this Dragonite of Lances when you meet it in battle. So I do have that Dragonite now add to the team. I'll probably start putting it into contests and stuff. I like... What I'm doing with the mythical distributions right now of Mew and Celebi thus far, I'm trying to get them all the ribbons that I can from the X and Y games and the Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire games, like the Contest and the Elite Four ribbons and Friendship ribbons and stuff. So I'm probably going to do that with the Dragonite as well. I also did it with the Happy Hour Delaware too. Now, into the TCG, TCG spectrum of news, I was going to say action for some reason, a new collection is coming out. It is the Charizard EX Red and Blue Collection. As you can see here, you get a pretty decent collection of items. You get a special Charizard figure, a special Charizard EX foil card, four Pokemon TCG Generations booster packs, and a code card used in the online Pokemon TCG. Now, what I found out with the Mew collection, the code that comes in this box actually will unlock everything, well, probably not the figure, but card-wise, it unlocks all the cards that you would get in this Generations box, so a single code will unlock the four booster packs plus the foil uh, promo card. So you don't get individual cards in the uh, booster packs themselves as far as code cards go, which is interesting. It's like, I wonder if they would actually do that for other collections later on, but then they probably just take the single booster packs that have the code cards and put them in. I don't know. Anyway, when you get this Charizard EX collection box, you'll unlock everything like that on there with that one single code card. And this is the kind of item that, like I mentioned a while back, if and when I hit a thousand subscribers on the channel, I would like to have something like this to unbox on the channel and give the code card out, but I would also like to be able to have a second copy that I can actually mail a physical copy out to somebody 
participates in the question of the day. It's sort of like a nice landmark celebration of hitting 1,000 subscribers. So, if you're watching this video and you're not yet subscribed, this is now going to sound like me saying, I want more subscribers, which obviously I do, but if you do want to subscribe, and as soon as we get to that 1,000 subscriber mark, we're going to have something really cool to give out, and one of these, I'm hoping to have like a nice big collection box as a mail out. So anyway, that is something to look forward to in the future. And another big mention from the world of the TCG is there is a new pre-release format coming up. Now, next month, April 23rd, actually, I'm going to be at the local Heroes Beacon Pokemon League for our Fates Collide pre-release, which is the next set coming up. It's the third set in the Break Evolution expansion kind of collection. And they're actually changing the way they do these pre-releases. Now, I've seen firsthand that sometimes you just don't get the right cards out of a... Uh, you know, the six booster packs that you get at a pre-release. You might get, like, a ch uh, Stage 2 Pokemon, a Stage 1, very powerful cards, but you just happen to not find any basics to put that into play. And you can't do any trading at the start of one of these pre-releases. You have to actually just use the cards that you get. Trading can come afterwards. So, what they're going to do to make things a little bit better for all the players is you only, you, you only get four booster packs at this point, but you actually get a 22-card pre-release pack of specially selected cards to fill or to form and build a basic core of a pre-release deck. Then you take those four booster packs plus a special exclusive foil promo card that you get at these pre-releases and add in whatever else you want to put in plus any basic energy that the tournament organizer will provide for you. That's what you're going to make your 40 card deck out of. And I'll go over this a little bit more once we actually do the pre-release at the Heroes Beacon Pokemon League and I'm going to be filming some stuff for that as well. So I'll go over all this again once there, once again there. But that is a new format, and it's pretty cool because it's going to make things a little bit easier to sort of play the game. As I said, it's it w I can imagine it would be pretty frustrating to get a pretty powerful card and have no way to actually add it to the deck to put it into play. So that is actually all I'm going to mention for the news update for the week. What we're going to do right now is get into the pack opening of Roaring Skies. But first I'm going to give you the question of the day. And the question of the day is, since Pokemon 20 is still going strong for the year, and they're still distributing some special Pokemon through the online connections, which mythical Pokemon distribution are you most looking forward to, and why? Is it perhaps a special Pokemon that you do not have yet in your video game collection, or is it uh, one of those mythical collection TCG boxes that you want to add into your collection of cards? And as, as for me, I don't think there's any one in particular I'm most looking forward to. I think... All the mythical Pokemon are pretty special and pretty unique, and offhand, I can't really think of, I'm trying to think of all the different generations. I suppose Jirachi might be cool to get. I think that's the next one coming up. So we've already got Mew, we've already got Celebi. Jirachi, I believe, is third gen, so I think that's the next one that's going to be coming up. So, I don't know, I guess I kind of like all mythical Pokemon equally. I don't focus that much on the mythical or legendaries, because I like to take the more common Pokemon and try to make them as good as they can be. So, mythical Pokemon have always been like this sort of far-off little little vision sort of thing, right? So anyway, I have no particular favorite one way or the other, but whichever one comes out, I'm always looking forward to add more Pokemon into my collection and try to fill the Pokedex a little bit more. So if you have a particular favorite mythical Pokemon you're looking forward to in the distributions for Pokemon 20 Celebration, just let me know which one it is and why. And as for right now, we're going to open up the Roaring Skies Booster Pack and see what I get and give a code card out to one person that responds to that question of the day and it's going to come up on March 27th I actually did the uh, math in my head this time March 27th on Sunday is when I will select one person who has responded to the question of the day and I'll give that code card to that viewer so without further ado let's begin and so with the question of the day already out of the way let's get right into the pack opening of Roaring Skies and grab that code card off to the side until Sunday the 27th and, if I can actually get these cards out, here we go. So, code card to the side, and the ten cards for my collection, starting right here. First up is going to be the commons, of course. We have a Ninkeda, a Pit of, a Dunsparce, here's a Voltorb, and last common will be a Pikachu. Alright, uncommons begin with a Winona. Search your deck for up to three colorless Pokemon, reveal them, and put them into your hand. Not bad. Next is an Unpheasant. There's one of those colorless Pokemon right now. I really like that attack, Strong Winds. Now, I haven't actually used it, but... Shuffle all cards attached to each player's Pokemon into that player's deck. 
blow away all energy, all tools, anything like that. You're going to shuffle everything away, which is pretty crazy. All right, next we have a Fletchinder. Peck off to get rid of any tool cards before doing damage. Next, we have the Reverse Foil card. It's going to be an Exeggutor with Shake It Off and Seed Bomb. And the rare card of the Roaring Skies booster pack shall be a Shedinja. Not bad. It goes well with that Ninkata, of course. This is actually pretty cool, and I did put a TCG Online deck together featuring this at one point. If you can increase the HP of the Shedinja, and there are several ways to do that, Hopeless Scream can do a lot of good damage. It does 50 damage times the number of damage counters on this Pokemon. So normally you can only have up to two before this thing would be knocked out, doing 100 damage. But... There are Floet from the Flash Fire set, I believe it is, that increase the max HP of all your grass types by 20. So if you can actually get Shedinja's HP up pretty high, it can do a lot of good damage with that Hopeless Scream. And I've seen this run with Mew EX as well in the expanded format, with the versatile ability that lets it use other attacks. Mew can have a lot more damage counters than Shedinja, and Mew can use that Hopeless Scream. So that is the pack opening of the Roaring Skies. Once again, for your chance to win this... Pokemon TCG Online Code Card from Roaring Skies. Just answer the question of the day for this week, which is, which mythical Pokemon distribution are you most looking forward to, and why? Leave your comment down below. Use hashtag QOTD in your comment. And on Sunday, I'll select one person at random to receive that code card right here. With all that being said, we're going to end off the video today, folks. Come on back tomorrow for episode one for the week. I think it's episode 19 altogether of the Pokemon Blue playthrough as we continue our adventures in the Kanto region. With all that, we're going to sign off. Thank you for checking out the news update video, folks, and I'll catch you next time.